Imagine for a moment that you're living in the Middle Ages, sometime between the 5th and 15th centuries. The world around you is vastly different from what we know today. Towering castles, knights in shining armor, and villages where people gather around wells to gossip about the latest news. But if you were unlucky enough to fall ill in this world, you'd find yourself in the hands of medical practitioners whose methods were, to say the least, unorthodox. Today we're diving into the weird, the strange, and often downright terrifying medical practices of the Middle Ages. First, let's talk about the medieval concept of health, rooted in what was called the theory of the four humors. Medieval physicians believed that the body was governed by four fluids, blood, phlegm, black bile, and yellow bile. These were thought to affect not only your physical health, but also your mood and personality. Feeling a bit too fiery and irritable, you probably had too much yellow bile, a bit sluggish and moody. Time to get rid of that extra black bile. One of the most common treatments for imbalances was bloodletting. Yes, that's right. Dr. Doctors believed that by draining your blood, they could restore harmony to your body. Picture it, you walk into a doctor's office feeling feverish, and instead of handing you some pills or tea, the physician grabs a sharp tool, a leech, or even a dirty rusted lancet, and starts to drain your blood into a bowl. They might even collect enough to fill a few cups. They'd use leeches, or simply cut open a vein to let the blood flow. This practice often left patients weak and anemic. This practice was so popular that there were entire careers built around it. Professional leeches, as they were called, would travel from town to town offering their bloodletting services. And of course, this was done without anesthesia, antiseptics, or any understanding of infection. Sometimes, you'd leave the doctor feeling a lot worse than when you came in. Now, bloodletting sounds bad, but if you thought that was rough, wait until you hear about trepanation. Let's say you were suffering from chronic headaches, seizures, or maybe you were thought to be possessed by evil spirits. In the Middle Ages, one of the most common solutions, drilling a hole into your skull. Yep, you heard that right. Drilling, scraping, or cutting a hole directly into your head. Trepanation was believed to relieve pressure, cure epilepsy, or release demons from the mind. But without modern medical knowledge or surgical tools, can you imagine how dangerous and painful this procedure must have been? Despite the risk of infection or brain damage, some people actually survived, and their skulls, bearing the holes from this bizarre surgery, have been found by archaeologists. What's truly baffling is that trepanation wasn't exclusive to the Middle Ages. It was practiced by ancient civilizations too, but in medieval times it became a common go-to for many ailments, even though there was little understanding of the brain or why people got sick in the first place. Next up, we have a practice that might sound odd, but was considered cutting-edge diagnostic medicine in its day, urine analysis. Doctors in the Middle Ages didn't have blood tests, x-rays, or MRIs, so they relied on more, shall we say, earthy methods. A patient's urine was the key to unlocking the mysteries of their health. Physicians would examine its color, smell, and even taste it to determine what was wrong with you. Yes, you heard that right, they tasted urine. It wasn't just some back alley quacks doing this. Even the most respected physicians followed this practice. They had elaborate charts to compare the color of the urine, believing it could indicate everything from liver disease to pregnancy. If your urine was too dark, too light, or too foamy, each one was a clue to what was ailing you. Imagine visiting a doctor today, and after a few moments of sniffing and swirling a small vial of your urine, the physician looks up and says, Ah yes, you've got a bit too much black bile in your system. Let's fix that. If you thought medieval doctors stopped at draining blood or drilling into your skull, think again. Another common treatment was cauterization. Essentially, this involved taking a red-hot iron and burning a wound or sore to prevent infection, stop bleeding, or close off injuries. While the logic was somewhat sound, heat can kill bacteria and seal wounds. The process was unbelievably painful. Imagine a festering wound or a sore that just won't heal. A medieval doctor comes over, places a glowing hot iron rod directly on your skin, and presses down. The searing pain would have been excruciating, and there was no guarantee it would work. Worse yet, many times the wounds became even more infected afterward due to the lack of hygiene. But cauterization wasn't just used for wounds. Sometimes it was employed to treat hemorrhoids or even dental problems. Picture someone trying to relieve a toothache with a branding iron. Not all medical treatments in the Middle Ages were so hands-on. Many people believed that illness was a form of divine punishment or the result of sin. So naturally, cures often involved religion. Pilgrimages to holy sites, praying to saints, or using relics, think pieces of saints' bones or hair, were all common remedies for those who could afford them. People believed that touching or or even being near these relics could cure everything from the plague to infertility. 
In addition to relics, magic potions, herbal remedies, and charms were widely used. Apothecaries mixed up concoctions that were equal part superstition and natural medicine. One infamous potion involved mixing wine, herbs, and the testicles of animals. Yes, animal parts were often key ingredients in medieval medicines. But not all potions were based on animal parts. Some were quite practical, using herbs like sage or lavender to soothe ailments. Unfortunately, they were usually mixed with other less helpful ingredients like lead, mercury, or ground up gems. It was a wild mix of the practical and the bizarre. Now, let's talk about dentistry, or the medieval version of it. Toothaches were common back then, just as they are now, but medieval folk had a very peculiar theory about what caused them. Many believe that toothaches were caused by tiny worms living inside your teeth. Yes, worms. If you had a bad tooth, it was said that these little creatures were gnawing away inside it, causing you all that pain. So, how did they get rid of these tooth worms? Well, medieval remedies for this involve burning herbs and directing the smoke into your mouth to smoke smoke out the worms. If that didn't work, a more extreme solution was tooth extraction. Without anesthetics, this was as horrifying as it sounds. If you had a bad tooth, it was yanked out with pliers, often by a barber surgeon. Can you imagine the pain? Speaking of barbers, did you know that in the Middle Ages, your local barber might not just give you a haircut, but also perform surgery? Barber surgeons were the go-to practitioners for everything from pulling teeth to amputating limbs. They were essentially jacks of all trades, combining grooming surgery services with medical procedures. If you needed an amputation, you'd be relying on your friendly neighborhood barber to grab his saw and hack away at the infected limb. With no anesthetics and no sterilization, you can imagine how nightmarish this could be. And yet barbers were often the most accessible doctors for common folk. Speaking of pain, let's discuss barber surgeons. These guys were the jack of all trades in medieval medicine. Need a haircut? They've got you covered. Tooth extraction? No problem. Amputation? They'll do that too. Barber surgeons were known for amputations. They were done quickly and without anesthesia. The barber surgeon would use a saw to cut through bone and flesh. To stop the bleeding, they'd use hot irons to cauterize the wound. As we take a step back from this wild tour of medieval medicine, it's clear that while these practices may seem bizarre to us today, they were based on the knowledge or lack thereof that people had at the time. Without modern science, these methods were often the best they could come up with, even if they seem terrifying or ridiculous now. So next time you're at the doctor's office and feeling a bit nervous about a shot or procedure, just be thankful you're not living in the Middle Ages, where your treatment might have involved a rusty saw, a bowl of leeches, or a mysterious potion brewed up by an apothecary. And that's the strange world of medieval medicine, where bloodletting, skull drilling, and burning wounds were all part of a day's work for a doctor. Comment your thoughts. Would you try any of these remedies? Subscribe for more bizarre historical facts.